Music education is a field of study associated with the teaching and learning of music. It touches on all learning domains, including the psychomotor domain, the cognitive domain, and, in particular and significant ways, the affective domain, including music appreciation and sensitivity. Music training from preschool through post-secondary education is common in most nations because involvement with music is considered a fundamental component of human culture and behavior. Music, like language, is an accomplishment that distinguishes humans as a species. During the 20th century, many distinctive approaches were developed or further refined for the teaching of music, some of which have had widespread impact. The Dalcroza method was developed in the early 20th century by Swiss musician and educator Emile Jacques Dalcroza. The Codeli method emphasizes the benefits of physical instruction and response to music. The offshore work approach to music education leads students to develop their music abilities in a way that parallels the development of Western music. The Suzuki method creates the same environment for learning music that a person has for learning their native language. Gordon Music Learning Theory provides the music teacher with a method for teaching musicianship through audiation. Gordon's term for hearing music in the mind with understanding. Conversational solfage immerses students in the musical literature of their own culture, in this case American. The Caribou Cone method involves using props, costumes, and toys for children to learn basic musical concepts of staff, note duration, and the piano keyboard. The concrete environment of the specially planned classroom allows the child to learn the fundamentals of music by exploring through touch. Popular music pedagogy is the systematic teaching and learning of rock music and other forms of popular music both inside and outside formal classroom settings. The MMCP aims to shape attitudes, helping students see music not as static content to be mastered, but as personal, current, and evolving. American fiddler Mark O'Connor developed a method of violin education that is designed to guide students in developing musical techniques necessary to become a proficient violinist. During its tenure, the Mumbai-based Boss School of Music developed a proprietary method of education using audio-visual technology, simplified concepts, and specially designed musical equipment. Overview In primary schools in European countries, children often learn to play instruments such as keyboards or recorders, sing in small choirs, and learn about the elements of music and history of music. In countries such as India, the harmonium is used in schools, but instruments like keyboards and violin are also common. Students are normally taught basics of Indian raga music. In primary and secondary schools, students may often have the opportunity to perform in some type of musical ensemble, such as a choir, orchestra, or school band, concert band, marching band, or jazz band. In some secondary schools, additional music classes may also be available. In junior high school or its equivalent, music usually continues to be a required part of the curriculum. At the university level, students in most arts and humanities programs receive academic credit for music courses such as music history, typically of Western art music, or music appreciation, which focuses on listening and learning about different musical styles. In addition, most North American and European universities offer music ensembles, such as choir, concert band, marching band, or orchestra, that are open to students from various fields of study. Most universities also offer degree programs in music education, certifying students as primary and secondary music educators. Advanced degrees such as the DMA or the PhD can lead to university employment. These degrees are awarded upon completion of music theory, music history, technique classes, private instruction with a specific instrument, ensemble participation, and in-depth observations of experienced educators. Music education departments in North American and European universities also support interdisciplinary research in such areas as music psychology 
music education historiography, educational ethnomusicology, sociomusicology, and philosophy of education. The study of Western art music is increasingly common in music education outside of North America and Europe, including Asian nations such as South Korea, Japan, and China. At the same time, Western universities and colleges are widening their curriculum to include music of outside the Western art music canon, including music of West Africa, of Indonesia, Mexico, Zimbabwe, as well as popular music. Music education also takes place in individualized, lifelong learning, and in community contexts. Both amateur and professional musicians typically take music lessons, short private sessions with an individual teacher. Instructional methodologies While instructional strategies are determined by the music teacher and the music curriculum in his or her area, many teachers rely heavily on one of many instructional methodologies that emerged in recent generations and developed rapidly during the latter half of the 20th century. Major International Music Education Methods Dalcroza Method The Dalcroza Method was developed in the early 20th century by Swiss musician and educator Emile Jacques Dalcroza. The method is divided into three fundamental concepts, the use of solfage, improvisation, and eurythmics. Sometimes referred to as rhythmic gymnastics, eurythmics teaches concepts of rhythm, structure, and musical expression using movement, and is the concept for which Dalcroza is best known. It focuses on allowing the student to gain physical awareness and experience of music through training that engages all of the senses, particularly kinesthetic. According to the Dalcroza method, music is the fundamental language of the human brain and therefore deeply connected to who we are. American proponents of the Dalcroza method include Ruth Alperson, Ann Farber, Herb Henker, Virginia Mead, Lisa Parker, Martha Sanchez, and Julia Scondley Black. Many active teachers of Dalcroza method were trained by Dr. Hilda Schuster who was one of the students of Dalcroza. Kodaly method Zoltán Kodaly was a prominent Hungarian music educator and composer who stressed the benefits of physical instruction and response to music. Although not really an educational method, his teachings reside within a fun, educational framework built on a solid grasp of basic music theory and music notation in various verbal and written forms. Kodaly's primary goal was to instill a lifelong love of music in his students and felt that it was the duty of the child's school to provide this vital element of education. Some of Kodaly's trademark teaching methods include the use of solfage hand signs, musical shorthand notation, and rhythm solmization. Most countries have used their own folk music traditions to construct their own instruction sequence but the United States primarily uses the Hungarian sequence. The work of Denise Bacon, Katinka S. Daniel, John Feyerabend, John Sinor, Jill Trinker, and others brought Kodaly's ideas to the forefront of music education in the United States. Orff Schulwerk Karl Orff was a prominent German composer. Orff Schulwerk is considered an approach to music education. It begins with a student's innate abilities to engage in rudimentary forms of music using basic rhythms and melodies. Orff considers the whole body a percussive instrument and students are led to develop their music abilities in a way that parallels the development of Western music. The approach fosters student self-discovery, encourages improvisation, and discourages adult pressures and mechanical drill. Karl Orff developed a special group of instruments, including modifications of the glockenspiel, xylophone, metallophone, drum, and other percussion instruments to accommodate the requirements of the Schulwerk courses. Experts in shaping an American-style Orff approach include Jane Frazee, Arvida Steen, Judith Thomas, and many more. Suzuki Method The Suzuki Method was developed by Shinichi Suzuki in Japan shortly after World War II, and it uses music education to enrich the lives and moral character of its students. 
The movement rests on the double premise that all children can be well educated in music, and that learning to play music at a high level also involves learning certain character traits or virtues which make a person's soul more beautiful. The primary method for achieving this is centered around creating the same environment for learning music that a person has for learning their native language. This ideal environment includes love, high-quality examples, praise, rote training and repetition, and a timetable set by the student's developmental readiness for learning a particular technique. While the Suzuki method is quite popular internationally, within Japan its influence is less significant than the Yamaha method. Founded by Jinichi Kawakami in association with the Yamaha Music Foundation. Other notable methods in addition to the four major international methods described above, other approaches have been influential. Lesser known methods are described below. Gordon's Music Learning Theory Edwin Gordon's Music Learning Theory is based on an extensive body of research and field testing by Edwin E. Gordon and others in the larger field of music learning theory. It provides music teachers with a comprehensive framework for teaching musicianship through audiation. Gordon's term for hearing music in the mind with understanding and comprehension when the sound is not physically present. The skills and content sequences within the audiation theory help music teachers establish sequential curricular objectives in accord with their own teaching styles and beliefs. There also is a learning theory for newborns and young children in which the types and stages of preparatory audiation are outlined. World Music Pedagogy The growth of cultural diversity within school age populations prompted music educators from the 1960s onward to diversify their music curriculum and to work with ethnomusicologists and artist musicians to establish instructional practices rooted in musical traditions. World Music Pedagogy was coined by Patricia Sheehan Campbell to describe world music content and practice in elementary and secondary school music programs. Pioneers of the movement, especially Barbara Reeder Lundquist, William M. Anderson, and Will Schmid, influenced a second generation of music educators to design and deliver curricular models to music teachers of various levels and specializations. The pedagogy advocates the use of human resources, i.e., culture bearers, as well as deep and continued listening to archived resources such as those of Smithsonian Folkways recordings. Conversational solfage influenced by both the Codely method and Gordon's music learning theory, conversational solfage was developed by Dr. John M. Feyerabend, former chair of music education at the Hart School, University of Hartford. The program begins by immersing students in the musical literature of their own culture, in this case American. Music is seen as separate from, and more fundamental than, notation. In 12 learning stages, students move from hearing and singing music to decoding and then creating music using spoken syllables and then standard written notation, rather than implementing the Codely method directly. This method follows Codely's original instructions and builds on America's own folk songs instead of on Hungarian folk songs. Carabo Cone Method This early childhood approach, sometimes referred to as the sensory motor approach to music, was developed by the violinist Madeline Carabo Cone. This approach involves using props, costumes, and toys for children to learn basic musical concepts of staff, note duration, and the piano keyboard. The concrete environment of the specially planned classroom allows the child to learn the fundamentals of music by exploring through touch. Popular music pedagogy Popular music pedagogy, alternatively called rock music pedagogy, modern band, popular music education, or rock music education, is a recent development in music education consisting of the systematic teaching and learning of rock music and other forms of popular music both inside and outside formal classroom settings. Popular music pedagogy tends to emphasize group improvisation, and is more commonly associated with community music activities than fully institutionalized school music ensembles.
MMCP The Manhattanville Music Curriculum Project was developed in 1965 as a response to declining student interest in school music. This creative approach aims to shape attitudes, helping students see music not as static content to be mastered, but as personal, current, and evolving. Rather than imparting factual knowledge, this method centers around the student, who learns through investigation, experimentation, and discovery. The teacher gives a group of students a specific problem to solve together and allows freedom to create, perform, improvise, conduct, research and investigate different facets of music in a spiral curriculum. MMCP is viewed as the forerunner to projects in creative music, composition and improvisation activities in schools. O'Connor Method American fiddler Mark O'Connor developed a method of violin education that is designed to guide students in developing musical techniques necessary to become a proficient violinist. The method consists of a series of pieces covering a wide range of genres. Teacher training sessions based on the method take place around the country. Boss School Method During its tenure, the Mumbai-based Boss School of Music developed a proprietary method of education using audio-visual technology, simplified concepts, and specially designed musical equipment. They trained novice students for standardized electronic keyboard graded examinations conducted by Trinity College London, requiring only three to six months of training using their methods. Traditional methods required up to eight years to prepare students for testing. Dr. Vidyadav Yas, head of the music department at the University of Mumbai, claimed that they revolutionized music learning by teaching complex musical concepts in short periods of time. They also trained a few young children ages 6 to 10 for the Trinity College grade 8 examination. After passing the examination, the students were reportedly considered child prodigies. Although the Boss School method is not formally documented, various notable musicians in Mumbai such as Lewis Banks agreed that the school had developed a revolutionary technique. Some controversy has surrounded the school and its methods. The Thing System Meredith Wilson's groundbreaking methodology was pioneered by instrumental music educator Professor Harold Hill. History of Music Education in the United States 18th century after the preaching of Rev. Thomas M.S. The first singing school was created in 1717 in Boston for the purposes of improving singing and music reading in the church. These singing schools gradually spread throughout the colonies. Music education continued to flourish with the creation of the Academy of Music in Boston. Rev. John Tufts published an introduction to the singing of psalm tunes using non-traditional notation which is regarded as the first music textbook in the colonies. Between 1700 to 1820, more than 375 tune books would be published by such authors as Samuel Holyoke, Francis Hopkinson, William Billings, and Oliver Holden. Music began to spread as a curricular subject into other school districts. Soon after music expanded to all grade levels and the teaching of music reading was improved until the music curriculum grew to include several activities in addition to music reading. By the end of 1864 public school music had spread throughout the country. 19th century In 1832, Lowell Mason and George Webb formed the Boston Academy of Music with the purposes of teaching singing and theory as well as methods of teaching music. Mason published his Manual of Instruction in 1834 which was based upon the music education works of Pestalozzian system of education founded by Swiss educator Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. This handbook gradually became used by many singing school teachers. From 1837 to 1838, the Boston School Committee allowed Lowell Mason to teach music in the Hawes School as a demonstration. This is regarded as the first time music education was introduced to public schools in the United States. In 1838 the Boston School Committee approved the inclusion of music in the curriculum and Lowell Mason became the first recognized supervisor of elementary music. 
In later years Luther Whiting Mason became the supervisor of music in Boston and spread music education into all levels of public education. During the middle of the 19th century, Boston became the model to which many other cities across the United States included and shaped their public school music education programs. Music methodology for teachers as a course was first introduced in the normal school in Potsdam. The concept of classroom teachers in a school that taught music under the direction of a music supervisor was the standard model for public school music education during this century. While women were discouraged from composing in the 19th century, later, it was accepted that women would have a role in music education, and they became involved in this field, to such a degree that women dominated music education during the later half of the 19th century and well, into the 20th century, early 20th century in the United States. Teaching colleges with four-year degree programs developed from the normal schools and included music. Oberlin Conservatory first offered the Bachelor of Music Education degree. Osborne G. McCarthy, an American music educator, introduced details for studying music for credit in Chelsea High School. Notable events in the history of music education in the early 20th century also include founding of the Music Supervisors National Conference in Keokuk, Iowa in 1907, rise of the school band and orchestra movement leading to performance-oriented school music programs, growth in music methods publications. Francis Elliott Clark develops and promotes phonograph record libraries for school use. Carl C. Shaw and his measures of musical talent music aptitude test starts testing people in music. Middle 20th century to 21st century American music education The following table illustrates some notable developments from this period. Music, course offerings and even entire degree programs in online music education developed in the first decade of the 21st century at various institutions and the fields of world music pedagogy and popular music pedagogy have also seen notable expansion.